Welcome back, everybody, to another exclusive interview here on the Wisdom Hub. It's my absolute pleasure to once again be talking in person, live and direct, with uh, the beautiful Pam Gregory, astrologer, who uh, many of you will have been tuning into for a long time, and some of you may be tuning into for the first time. Uh, myself and Pam did a really interesting piece of astrology meets uh, plant medicine, magic, shamanism a little bit in uh, a piece we called uh, Organic versus Inorganic, looking at the big motif of uh, Uranus and Taurus uh, this year. So we've decided to, to get together again. Uh, we've been exchanging a lot of ideas and really creative, inspirational uh, pieces around connecting astrology and healing and medicine and particularly the quantum space. And so today we're going to be looking at what we both believe is a very, very important moment in human history, which is June 2021, possibly the most pivotal moment, certainly in my life to date, and maybe for some of you too. And this will be around the piece of summer solstice before and after. So welcome, Pam. It's an absolute joy to be chatting to you again. And I'm super excited about what might come out of this call today. And hopefully we can inspire some of our audience and listeners out there to tune into the energies too, and really work with the higher frequencies, the higher energies and the positive notes that are coming to us all right now. And certainly I've been experiencing as, as a medicine person, as an empath very strongly, particularly the last few days. Um, but without giving too much away, I'm gonna hand over to Pam to talk about the key moments in the run up to the summer solstice and then what comes after that. Cause they're both kind of important, you know, the before and the after is for a reason. So over to you, Pam. Thank you, David. It's a, it's a, it's a great joy to be with you again. Fantastic. We had a great discussion last time. Yeah, it's a very interesting time. Many of you are maybe aware or certainly feeling these huge waves of energy coming in. Um, the magnetics of the earth are essentially changing very, very quickly, really quite dramatically. I mean, many of you may be aware that the North Pole is shifting so fast that they're having to update GPS systems more quickly to make sure planes land in the right place. And, you know, cars drive to the right destination. It's moving very rapidly. It's been moving through through Siberia at a rate that is unprecedented. And at the same time, um, I'm sure linked to that, the energy lines of the earth are strengthening, widening everywhere. The earth's core is expanding and that is in part causing a lot more earthquake and volcanic activity as the crust actually cracks. And because of the drop in the magnetic shield, again, this is all very measurable, the drop in the magnetic shield of the earth means that we are getting a lot more cosmic and galactic radiation, a lot more photonic light through to us. And that is causing um, big peaks in the Schumann resonance, which is the heartbeat of the earth. So essentially as human beings, we are sandwiched between the earth having its own rebirth, if you like, and this very high frequency cosmic light. So um, it is hard to escape the ascension, let's say. It's hard to escape the, the upgrade. And what's very interesting, I'd like to hear your views on this too, David. Um, I sort of every now and then um, douse with a pendulum, my own frequency and how that's changed, but also I'm dowsing the frequency of the collective. And what's interesting from the beginning of this year is there has been a significant shift in the in the frequency of the collective upwards mm -hmm. um, because of all these, you know, cosmological and, and, and pure physics um, happenings for us. You know, mine has gone in in sort of jumps as well. But it's very interesting that despite everything we see on the 3D level and so much fear and contraction, nevertheless, the collective frequency, according to my humble dowsing, is still increasing so we you know we are all in this together whether you're on i like to think almost you know that we're going to heathrow and we've either cho chosen fast track or slow track but we all still get on the plane at the end of the day let's hope the plane wasn't um, going to portugal huh <laughs> yes <laughs> yes bad luck gosh that's such a problem so you know that's how i'm seeing it from a kind of physics and cosmological point of view and then bring it back to the astrology you know we're well aware we've got a solar eclipse in um gemini coming up this thursday on the 10th and that to me is really about creating a new narrative for yourself gemini is all about our thinking and if over the last 16 months in particular you felt extremely fearful and contracted that is the future you're, you're going to keep on recreating fear and contraction you know universe is just a mirror we know this however this kind of kick start of a big new beginning which is what a solar eclipse is gives us the opportunity for 
a whole new narrative. Turn your thinking around. I so often recommend to clients to stick post-it notes all over their house, you know, fridge, bathroom, mirror, kitchen cupboard, say, what are you thinking? What's your frequency? Where's your head at? Because until we get that perspective, we can step one step back, which Gemini is really good at. It's very objective. It's very rational. And observe your thinking. You can't catch it because you're in it. You're just in it. But the step back allows you, the post-it notes allow you to say, actually, I'm on a really negative run of fear here. And so that's what you're going to keep attracting. So this, this kind of jump of the solar eclipse gives us an opportunity for a new narrative to begin. And you've got to be rigorous with that. You've got to be a kind of initially a kind of thought policeman, if you'd like, to catch yourself and, and make new habits. Make new habits. And Neptune is square to the sun, moon and Mercury, Mercury ruler of Gemini in Gemini here. And on the one hand, that can make us feel overwhelmed. It can make us feel quite tired, um, which you and I have talked a lot about, David. It can make you just feel um, unconfused. I don't know what's true and what's not. And of course, there's huge amounts of disinformation out there. But at a higher level, this is spiritually inspired thinking. It's a spiritually inspired communication that in as far as we are able through our days, we are actually connected to the divine. We're connected to source in everything we, we think and speak. And wouldn't that be a revolution if we all did that? I mean, it's, it's interesting, you know, as a Buddhist student for many years, uh, you know, we were taught it's right action, right uh, thought and right words. And I, I, you know, right words and right actions I could get on board, but I always used to think, well, no one really knows what's going on inside my head. So if I have the odd errant thought, does it really matter that much? Now that I work in the quantum field as a medicine person, it absolutely matters. Every single little thought that you have sends out a frequency and a wave. And particularly if it's about somebody and particularly in not a positive way, then that can absolutely affect them. And we often as quantum healers have to deal with the effects of these that have come to people from somebody else. So I feel that really, you know, the, the motif here is to make sure that we are absolutely clear in our thinking before we even think about opening our mouth and then putting action to it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Beautiful. And, uh, and also I think as we move through these coming months and years, we are really going to get that we create our reality from our frequency. We are really, really going to understand that, you know, in our bones and get that in a way that we haven't done before. Because in 3D, you know, we had external sources of authority and all hummed along reasonably well in a ramshackle kind of way. But, you know, there wasn't much questioning. Now, everything is being thrown up in the air. So there's much more questioning, a lot of mutable energy, which means the anchors are off, but that also gives us the opportunity to create something entirely new because the structures are, are crumbling before our eyes on a daily basis. We're, you know, we're very well aware of that. I mean, it seems to me that a lot of this is really energetically about self-responsibility. And I, I guess probably many of us would think that we're very responsible people, but actually when you break it down and you meditate on this and you start to see how much responsibility you are taking for other people in your life and how much they might be taking for you, you realize that you're not really that sovereign at all. And this is a great mind training and meditation exercise is to really sit and see how much do you need somebody for something or how much do they need you for something? Because what that does, I've realized is it creates a dynamic uh, that is is more in favor of one person one way than another and it creates this imbalance and I kind of feel that what we're being asked to do right now in this this big ascension process this shift is to really come back to ourselves and be responsible for every thought every action and every word and and I think that once we have got that understood then we can really start to think about a new type of humanity right yeah, beautiful. And, you know, that's where we're headed, in my view. We're headed towards becoming multidimensional light beings. Yeah. That's where we're headed and much more galactic. I think we're going to have a lot more galactic contacts as, as time goes on. I mean, that's becoming apparent already. You know, more and more people are channeling galactic beings or the Galactic Council or whatever. You know, that's becoming almost in our world, David, more commonplace, you know, because so many people are doing it. So, and a lot more sightings of UFOs. I think it's going to be a lot of disclosure around that this year. That's starting to happen already, you know, in the US um, and even in London. I can't believe that, was it the Daily Express? Had photographs of spaceships above London. I mean, good Lord, beam me up, Scotty. I mean, I've never have imagined that the Daily Express would be... <laughs> 
you know, we'd have a story like that. So it's, you know, it's emerging. Yeah. Now, again, you've got to say what's true and what's not, because there may be, you know, certain plans, let's say, behind why is that being released. But if you just always drop into your heart to test out, you know, what's true, what's not, I often use a pendulum as well to check it out, then we can see, you know, is this for our greater good or is this just another kind of wild goose chase? Yeah, you know, that's really, really, really interesting. You know, we also use a pendulum a lot. Uh, you know, we are empathic healers. Uh, I tend to use my in my innate intuition a lot. But when we're doing healings on people, we sometimes need to be really, really precise. But sometimes we also need to make sure that we have the right permissions. And this is also something when we're doing healing work that we're particularly working with a pendulum. We have to be super sure that what we're doing, A, is safe for us, safe for the beings that we're working with in the quantum field. But also, do we have permission with the person that we think we're helping? And I remember very clearly a friend of mine who uh, was telling us a story on our training many years ago of a friend of hers who'd gone into hospital and one of her friends had got everybody on Facebook to send her healing energy, but hadn't asked the person in the hospital whether it was okay. So what should have been received as healing energy actually ended up being a cavalcade of psychic attacks because she hadn't given permission for them. So we always share this with our students and it's kind of like, this is, you know, rule one is like permission. So that thing is really, really cool. And it's a great way to check in on yourself if you're not sure about something. And so I haven't actually doused on the collective frequency, but I think I might do, you know, we, I think that, that we can kind of do that collectively because we are part of the collective. But if you're tuning into an individual and asking what's their frequency about their permission, then you're kind of a little bit on gray ground. So I just want to, to bring that little bit of protocol in, but you know yeah. pendulum is basically an extension of ourself right you know it's it's just our in own our own intuition that we are using through uh, through through the dowsing so i highly recommend dowsing it's a big tool that we work with and obviously you do too pam and it can help us come to some good truths right i i really really agree and it's a great point you make david because i always um you know being aware of what you've said i think it's almost like a spiritual law that mm. you do not transgress without asking permission so I will always when I douse ask permission to douse for myself and then if I'm checking anyone else do I have permission to douse for this person's energy field and you know I will really obey the yes or the no so yeah 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 that's okay. really yeah. and even if it's someone like a world leader maybe that maybe you do or you don't like and somehow you think it's okay because they're famous and these rules don't really apply it absolutely does apply to them too and sometimes it even more applies to those powerful figures who don't want to be uh, looked into without permission you know so uh, just just to throw that out there for all of the, the the witchy folk who might be listening and we have to be careful about these things sometimes so just to to check your self-responsibility in your healing work because you know as healers we always want to help people but sometimes they might not always want our help and I also think that that is quite a big part of what is going on right now is is, is respecting each other's wishes yeah excellent and, and it's also part of our integrity right you know, our high principle in, in whatever we're doing. And I think integrity is a really, really big deal as we go through this year. You know, it's part of the message of Pluto and Capricorn. Anything that lacks integrity, it's going to be just, you know, the dirt will be dug up. And it's particularly in Capricorn around governments, big organisations, big corporations, but it also applies to us individually as well. The micro and the macro, right? You know, whatever is going on for us right now is when we put the uh, attention to the collective, you'll often find that somehow the same thing is going on in the collective. If you're having a really angry day and then you watch the news, oh, lo and behold, it seems like a lot of people are having an angry day, right? I've seen that plenty over the last 12 months, particularly in the middle yeah. of my detox. I noticed it quite a lot. <laughs> Yeah, we're just picking it up from the collective, you know, because if we're empathetic, as you say, you know, we're, we're possibly more porous to pick yeah. up the uh, collective energy. So, yeah, I think that the, I think belief systems are going to crumble this year. I mean, this really kicked off at the total supermoon lunar eclipse on the 26th of May. It was in Sagittarius. That's about truth. It's about belief systems. So I think they are just going to, a lot of, of people are going to be so shocked by truths coming out. And that may include, you know, you and I, David. I think everybody is going to be shocked to, to some degree, even though we may think, no, no, you know, I'm, <laughs> what's going on. I, you know, I think everybody will be shocked and, and belief systems will be tested to dust and that whole theme of belief systems crumbling as well as the total supermoon lunar eclipse which of course lasts for six months in its um effect also jupiter moving retrograde on the 20th jupiter in its relationship with sagittarius is also about belief systems and when it starts to backtrack 
and it's in Pisces and in part that's linked to drugs and medicines you know, a lot of unravelling around that may, may take place. I think there's going to be a lot of unravelling in general with, with those retrogrades. Because you think this is going to start with the Jupiter retrograde just before the solstice? You kind of see the yeah, energy starting it's to... Right, yeah, it's pretty much right on the solstice, yeah, right. on the summer solstice. It's, you know, within a few hours of exactitude of that summer solstice. And does that have um, a whole season of retrograded planets? Aren't there four or five planets going into retrograde? Yeah, yeah because um, Saturn went retrograde on the um, 23rd of May. Mm -hmm. Mercury went retrograde on the 29th of May. It goes direct on the 22nd of June. So almost Jupiter and Mercury cross over. You know, as one goes direct, the other goes retrograde. Um, Pluto is already retrograde. Neptune goes retrograde later in June. So we are going to have these retrogrades, um, most of them until October. And it's remarkable. I mentioned this in the last video, but mm. it's remarkable because um, they all backtrack until October. Then Pluto moves direct on the 6th of October. Saturn moves direct on the 11th of October. Jupiter moves direct on the 18th of October. So within less than two weeks, you've got this big shift in energy. And then on the 20th, you've got an absolute corker of a full moon with the sun, moon, Mars, and Pluto in essentially it's a cardinal grand cross. It's so that's, before my birthday as well. So that's going to be a funky Halloween for me. <laughs> yes, well, that was that. So, but you know, Libra is that you know the two signs associated with the law are Sagittarius and Libra. Mm. So we may see something legal happening at that time. Mm. It's also the sign of equality and fairness and justice, and, you know, scales of justice. So that will be very interesting to see what unfolds at that time. But I do have a sense that with all the retrogrades through the next few months, there's almost a sense of um, certainly backtracking on our belief systems, backtracking almost on the way society has been absolutely rocket fueling a particular direction. Because Jupiter moved through Aquarius faster than I've ever known it move. I mean, it was jet propelled. It's supposed to take a year to move through a sign. It moved through in five months. You know, and it's going to back up back into Aquarius, but woof. So Jupiter has huge, it's like a big dog, you know, big Labrador. It has huge, yeah, let's go do that. Yeah, it's huge enthusiasm. Sort of spontaneous. Yeah, that's a great idea. And Aquarius is the sign of science. So I think this is very, very interesting as Jupiter will start to backtrack on the 20th. And as I say, the others are already heading backwards and Neptune will join the party later in, later in June. Do you think the onset of the Aquarian energy could be a reframing then of what we understand science to be? I mean, one of the beautiful things I find about science is that uh, as, as a as a methodology for life, as a religion, maybe as some people would put it, it's, it's, it's a bit of a fallible one because it's always proving itself to be wrong, which is great because it's always showing that it's you know expanding, but it's not a great dogma to follow if it's consistently proving itself to be incorrect and you're living by those rules as a hard and fast truth. So I just want to throw that out there because I feel like science is a great thing, but it's a little bit prone to this way of thinking that the science shows us how it's going to be until it doesn't uh, next week. I think that is going to be revolutionized, David. I think mm -hmm. you're spot on. I think they're going to, there's so many new technologies that have already been developed, as we well know, but they're mm -hmm. not publicly available at this point, and they are going to change the world. They're going to change our physicality, our health system, um, our process of aging or rejuvenation, um, the way we grow food everything everything will change with these and i want to say benevolent beneficial new technologies that are based on organic principles some of them as you and i know have been developed off planet with, with benevolent galactic help it is going to be amazing once these benevolent technologies come in we just have to very much use our our discernment our intuition about you know what what is the origin of this technology is it benevolent or not because you know we're so much right now as we talked in the organic versus inorganic interview about this slippery slope of what's natural what's organic what's beneficial what's not because we're you know we're walking a very very fine line at the moment on that's where as we're very well aware so yeah great point i think science will change out of all recognition
And also something I just want to share that I think could be super interesting is that we as humans have a tendency, I think, to extrapolate the information and future from the present moment, not always factoring in that unexpected uranium moments can happen and that perhaps that there are gifts of future technology, benevolent technology that are already amongst us. We just don't know how they work. And a friend of ours introduced us to the concept of Ormus, the so-called white gold that is extracted from a sort of a saline seaweed um, material. But when you put it on the land, it's kind of like biodynamic farming plus plus. And so where this has been used in the world, it's shown that the land responds to it very positively and all of the food that is grown on it is super ripe, super delicious, super healthy, super wholesome with no chemicals, no pesticides, just tiny, tiny amounts of this almost put into the land, which almost kind of like seems to be an etheric substance, which just manifests really, really potent food. And this stuff has been with us on the planet for thousands of years. And um, everyone who's ever tried to make a commercial profit out of it has failed. It's not for commercial profit, it seems, but it does seem to grow amazing food. Some people have used it on their bodies with limited success, but it seems that it works really, really well in the ground. So I'm wondering how many more of these amazing technologies like Ormus, it already exists. We just don't know how they work. Yeah, yeah. And that's going to be incredibly exciting. That's the very you know upside of Aquarius. That's going to be incredibly, incredibly exciting. And I think the other side of, of Aquarius is finding your tribe. Mm -hmm. finding your community you know Saturn in Aquarius is putting effort putting work into finding your community and you know I've mentioned and you and I've discussed about um, events that happen regularly like stand in the park events or freedom marches or whatever where many people are finding people of like mind and that th that is going to produce new earth those grassroots movements are going to produce new earth yeah, I totally agree. We're seeing it out here, even in Mid Wales. I mean, we haven't been to a stand in the park, but some of us are having our own stand in the countryside walks and, you know, finding the like minded people and, and pooling ideas, pooling resources, uh, sharing um, information maybe that has come to us that maybe the others don't know. So it's really, uh, really beneficial to do that, but also just, just to get out on the land and be with like minded people. And it's, you know, it's, it feels like it's been a long time since we've really been able to do that. Uh, so I, I, for one, am welcoming the opportunity to find a new tribe uh, and welcome new people into my old tribe too, you know, so uh, I totally resonate with that. But let's come back to the to, to the solstice, because uh, we kind of went yep. off on some interesting tracks there. But yep. Talk, yep. yeah, talk to us a bit more about, uh, in fact, before we get to the solstice, there's also the Jupiter uh, square uh, Uranus, right? Uh, I think on the 14th. Saturn square Uranus. Saturn square Uranus, sorry, yes which is kind yeah. of the second hit of that, but it's also the day that it goes direct. And if I understand, it's kind of the culmination of that energy in this particular phase of whatever is going on. Is that correct? Yes, I think it's extremely interesting. You know, if we go back to the, the first hit, which was on February 17th this year, every much, every, everyone pretty much across the world was um, in lockdown. Yeah. And, you know, talked a lot about Saturn is control, the rules, the regulations, you know, for your own safety and Uranus is freedom. And so we were very much in lockdown. So you tend to get an echo of what happened first time around. So second time around um, and then the third time will be 24th of December. Um, so and it will continue, I have to say, through next year, but not exactly to the degree and minute just to the degree. So we've still got some way to run with this. But anyway, the second exact square is on the 14th of June. And that's why I've been writing in my newsletters for quite some time that I thought the UK would not achieve its total freedom on the 21st of June. As they are because indeed now telling us possibly is going to happen, right? That's what I thought. I mean, I haven't listened to the news for many months, but that's what I thought would happen because it's another attempt at control. Mm -hmm. And so I think the attempt at control would be greater, but also my very strong sense is the Uranus side is getting stronger by the day. The Uranus side of no, you know, we don't think that safety is such an issue now and freedom is more important to us. So I think there's a shift almost from the Saturn side to the Uranus side. And I think that's going to I think that's going to grow as we move through this year. And also that's reinforced by Eris in Aries being very tightly square Pluto in Capricorn. Eris is very similar in archetype to to Uranus. It's uppity. It's take to the streets. If you don't feel heard or you feel slighted, you know, you'll go out and protest. So that's reinforcing the Uranus side of this, this Saturn Uranus square. So that's my feeling. So this becomes quite a pivot point 
um, on the 14th of are people going to behave the same as they did on the first square in February? Mm. Has there been a shift of psychology and a shift of their need? And that's going to be very, very interesting to see. And at the end of the day, it's down to us, it's down to the collective and how the collective behave and how they live out that because, you know, part of, of the people are saying, no, no, we've got to stay safe. We, you know, we must obey and stay safe. And another part is saying, mm -mm. <laughs> less and less attractive to do that. So it, that will be fascinating to see how the collective um, pictures it at that time. It is interesting to see if you do occasionally look at the news, which I do occasionally, uh, just to kind of get a flavour of what the current narrative is, that a recent poll uh, suggested that most Britons, I think more, more just over two thirds, were not in favour of lockdown being eased. Now, uh, whether that narrative is 100% correct or whether it's uh, prone to some possible manipulation is entirely open to debate, and I wouldn't really care to comment on that right now, but it is interesting uh, in this particular pivot moment you're talking about that we have this kind of like sort of jarring effect that we might be being given our freedom back but some people might not want it which seems like a strange thing yes 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 because you know the, the safety is more attractive so we really have to see how this plays out because that will give us a lot more information about how it's going to play out with the third hit on 24th oh. of December so it's kind of watch this space with the collective energy and of course in this country we may be in a very different situation to other countries because you know that the, the the brits by nature um are a very conservative people so if we took that same poll in different countries of the world you might end up you know with a with, with a different view I can imagine if you took that poll in some South American countries, you might get a slightly different response. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed, but it's all feeding into the global collective. So anyway, I think that's a very important point to observe. So we'll see what happens, because it looks like certainly in the UK, we're not going to get full freedom. And, you know, what is what is that going to mean going forwards? And I think we're getting and I, you're very sensitive to energy, David, more than I am. But we're getting these waves of energy and we're getting evidence of that with, you know, these um, so very strong solar winds and storms that are happening. Apparently, a lot of websites have got knocked out today because mm. the energetics are so strong. A lot of people complaining they can't get onto certain websites. So the energy is strong. And my sense is that it's going to build and build and build into that summer solstice yeah. and i don't think it'll be quite as big as the energy wave we had on december 21st last year but i think it will be very significant and and what that will do is wake more people up big time big time yeah I, i'm inclined to agree i mean i i felt the energy of the winter solstice was incredibly powerful for me this summer solstice and it might just be my own natal job but this summer solstice actually to me in some ways feels it, as important if not slightly more important uh, i feel winter solstice was a moment that we all had an opportunity to fix ourselves in a certain energy trajectory which has largely i think carried everyone through the process over the last six months we now i feel are coming up to a fine tuning moment with the new moon uh, uh you know coming up this week with the solar eclipse which is a great opportunity as you've talked about a little bit and we'll, we'll get into a little bit more in a moment to set those new prayers, those new visions. We've then got this very interesting moment in between on the 14th, and then we have this powerful solstice, which is really the peak of the solar energy. In our traditions, it's when the king uh, of these lands, the oak, hands over to the holly, who leads us into holding space up until winter solstice when the light starts to return. So there are very, very powerful motifs that we work with uh, in our work with nature and in the quantum field that show us this kind of you know, these these rhythms uh, that once we drop into with Mother Earth are profound and they show us the way that we need to be. And actually, they take a lot of stress out of our life because nature has a way of organizing everything in this very, very efficient way, which in my experience is far better than anything that humans can come up with. But, you know, we've got these three very powerful moments and it seems to me that we are being asked to be very clear about what we want. I think we sort of had the opportunity at Winter Solstice and maybe many people had an idea of what they wanted, but maybe weren't super clear about how that was going to unfold and maybe asked a bit too broadly for something that maybe they've now got, maybe are regretting slightly. So I feel that this is a moment for us to be mature and actually grow up from maybe teenagers into young adults. Because one of the messages that I've had from the higher realms is that we are now in charge. To my surprise, when I asked, when are we going to get some help? I was told, what do you mean? You've already had all of the help. That happened at winter solstice. You guys are now in charge. You have to step up. 
perhaps deal with the uh, slightly narcissistic parents of your world, whoever you might perceive those to be, but also to go up and, and say, okay, maybe I need to take responsibility now for my life, my home, my world with other people who think like me. But do you think the energy of the next week or so would concur with that, Pam? Yes, totally. And I think it's a very good point. You know, I've heard from several um, gifted psychic people who, whose work I very much uh, respect and channel as, we are the plan. We are the plan. We as human beings are the plan, it's down to us. And so this whole period in history is not only about the evolution of humanity, it's about us learning our mastery. Minute to minute, day to day, week to week, us learning our mastery and our mastery comes in mastering our thinking mastering our emotions and also practicing things like setting clear intentions we, it's it's super easy you know present tense step into it as if the energy has already happened and even if you don't know the detail of that future you want just just set intentions for the feelings i'm already feeling so much more love in my life so much more joy so much more compassion so much more peace even just the emotions that you want to experience that'll do it because you get experiences to match those if you can step in to that new energy and feel them not just think them or say them but you know the, the, the big the big secret is feeling them isn't it so you, this is all about our mastery and also building up to that summer solstice I really feel it's the day before the day before to me is the big wave and that would be a fabulous day to meditate or get together with other people and pray or you know, whatever you feel is appropriate but that big wave because we've got some beautiful um trines at that summer solstice we've got the sun which has just entered cancer trining jupiter in the first couple of degrees of pisces and so this is big spiritual visions this is your big future vision for what you want to create you know bigger horizons bigger dreams that have a spiritual context because it's in pisces you know, I think it's the not whole... necessarily about praying for a promotion at work or hoping that your bank balance is suddenly going to have extra zeros on the end of it. We're talking about something that is much bigger, much more profound than this, right? Absolutely, totally. Because it's Pisces. Pisces doesn't give a, you know, pop and pop about the money <laughs> in the bank. It just doesn't. You know, this is this is ethereal. This is this is divine. This is beautiful. It's unconditional love. So this is this is really quite mystical. It's absolutely beautiful. So, you know, ask for, think about what would give you more spiritual meaning in your life. I think that's a very good way to look at it. Mm. What would give you more spiritual meaning in your life to help to create that new future vision for yourself and for the world? Mm. What is it that you're lacking right now? Because, you know, the last 16 months have been pretty short of spiritual meaning for many people not necessarily for everybody but for many one of the things i'd like to just draw back to is the in, we talked about in the last video is self-mastery of the body it's something that's come very very strongly to me i might have mastered a lot of my mind and some of my higher mind but my body has paid a price in that in that process that a lot of the attention was going upstairs to kind of waking up but my body now needs to be awoken as well to a new frequency and i was meditating on this yesterday and what came to me was at a cellular level using your methodology i am now detoxed it's not quite true because i'm still in the detox process but i love the idea that my cells are now detox and i am resonating a healthy cellular new energetic system which is only going to expand that's part of my new moon prayer Beautiful. And of course, you know, physically we are being upgraded. Literally right. every cell in our body yeah. is being upgraded because of this light, this photonic light. And our DNA is being activated or reactivated, depending on how you look at it. So, you know, this is a physical ascension as much as a spiritual one. Yeah. You know, so, and then the other beautiful, there are three trines here. The other beautiful trine is between um, Venus in Cancer and Neptune in Pisces. And again, this is exquisite beauty. You know, this is the beauty of nature. It's very fine. It's staring into a rose or, you know, into a leaf and just saying, wow, you know, isn't nature and divinity, divine intelligence, how exquisite it is. It's a very fine sense of beauty and aesthetics. And then also we have Saturn in Aquarius trying to Mercury in Gemini. And this is about long term 
planning, long-term thinking, almost like an architect when he has an idea for a house and then commits it to paper and then it ends up as bricks and mortar. It's, you know, it's a long-term vision that is connected with a, a better vision for humanity. Because like that analogy. That's, that's just a great analogy, but building our spiritual home for the future, right? Yeah, beautiful. Absolutely mm -hmm. beautiful. So those are some really glorious trines that you can wallow in, <laughs> you know, and meditate around for that, um, for that summer solstice. Mm -hmm. However, we've also got some gritty stuff. Right. Because at the moment of the summer solstice, um, we've got the moon at nine degrees of Scorpio, an incredibly intense emotional sign. So that is forming a T-square with the Saturn Uranus square. So the moon is opposing Uranus in Taurus and they are both squaring Saturn in Aquarius. So that is, so this is about the people feel intense. They're emotional, they're, you know, their, their emotions are very high, probably about these themes of freedom versus control because it's, it's forming a T-square of the Saturn Uranus. Mm. And which day is that, sorry? That's on the solstice. It's on the solstice as well. So we've got, this is a real kind of mixed bag solstice we're looking at. We've got this beautiful annular solar eclipse, which creates a sort of halo spiritual energy in some way. But then you've got this pretty gnarly T-square going on with Scorpio and Uranus and, and Saturn. And so how do you see those? I mean, is that kind of duality summed up in one way? Is this like, yeah, this is the great bit. Well, that's the not so great bit. You've got to deal with all of it. Do you feel it's a bit like that? I do, actually, I do. I really, really do. It seems that every chart I look at at the moment, it's operating kind of on two levels. You right. know, it's the real tough 3D stuff that's very hard for all of us. Lots of drama and colour and, you know, chaos. And, and then there's this other fabulous kind of waffly pink cloud, you know, ethereal stuff, which is just glorious. And I, I literally think those are the choices we're making. You know, where is our focus? Is our focus on the, you know, the chaos that's happening because there's lots of it to keep you occupied for sure um mm. but are we being disciplined and masterly enough to say no that's not going to get my attention i'm going to focus on something that i can pull from the quantum soup i can pull the ether in from the quantum soup and create something magnificent wow so, uh, again we come back to the idea of self mastery and responsibility right it's kind of you know taking the opportunity to be self-aware what am i doing right now where am i putting my attention where am I then letting my, you know, what is it, uh, where attention goes, energy flows. And so, you know, that's kind of in the medicine wheel, that's air to fire. You know, that's having an idea, giving it the energy, giving it fire. And of course, when we move to solstice, we're actually shifting elementally from fire to water. And in the medicine wheel, water is harvest time. It's where we get to, you know, we get to reap these, uh, you know, the rewards from the seeds that we've sown, whatever they might be, whether it's us as individuals, whether it's the collective, whether it's the people in charge, this is the time when harvest thing happens and so it's a really important shift actually but it's a very dramatic one from fire to water as well it is it is absolutely so you know emotions will be high because water mm -hmm. as you well know david is is emotion mm -hmm. as well and what I, I just want to see something as well what i think mm. is very interesting is is saturn is tracking either back or forwards through aquarius all the way through till march 2023 and in 2023 Pluto takes it. By the way, I think Saturn moving out of Aquarius in March 23 may help our freedom because it, when it entered Aquarius, that was on March 22nd, 2020. Most of the world went into lockdown on March 23rd, 2020. So there's a very high correlation of Saturn control or loss, Aquarius freedom. Mm, interesting. So I have some hope when Saturn moves out of Aquarius in March 2023, there may be, you know, a lot of easing in this situation. However, I also feel that Saturn is the setup for Pluto moving into Aquarius in 2023. Until is it late 2023 or 24? I've heard slightly different dates from different people. Back and forwards through late Capricorn, early Aquarius, 23, 24, fully moves in in 24, and it stays there for 20 years. 2044 i can't wait i love pluto it's my ruling planet and pluto is forensic in how it does stuff and i'm kind of like yeah when pluto's finished with capricorn i think we can kind of maybe hope a little bit that whatever kind of forensic research pluto's been doing into that top-down structure 
it will kind of have done its job and we can finally let whatever that was go. That's how it seems to me, but maybe I'm just being a bit optimistic. I don't know. Maybe no, no, I, I feel the same too. I'm very, you know, it's grinding through these last few degrees of Capricorn, unearthing stuff, and a lot of stuff is going to be unearthed this year. That's what's going to cause a lot of shock. That's going, what's going to rattle people's belief systems. And that is what will take us, I believe, to the tipping point. The tipping point of people's jump in frequency so that we can actually, all of us can get on a faster trajectory or, or many more of us, let's say, can get onto a faster trajectory because the leaps in, in, in frequency and consciousness that people are making are so fast right now. Mm. They're so quick, you know, I can barely keep up with it. So it's very fast. So we're in a situation where, you know, it's very complex because two different sets of things are happening all at the same time. These jumps in consciousness, jumps in frequency, some people having the best time in their lives ever and, you know, creating their future and growing vegetables and da da da. Whereas there's a whole different level, very much, I think, defined by the lower expression of Saturn square Uranus of much greater, um, how can I say, rules, regulations, control coming in, in that if you think about another expression of Saturn in Aquarius, Aquarius is technology and Saturn is control. So are we getting into a situation where societies are moving more and more towards more control using technology? Is that a possibility? Could be, who knows? <laughs> you know, so we have to be, I want to see that because we have to be incredibly, incredibly aware because everything is moving fast. I think it's, uh, this is a really important point, and I think we talked about it on the last call, and I think I've also talked about it on some other astrology calls I've done with my uh, friend and buddy John Modsworth, and we've talked about this idea of, you know, throwing the baby out with the bathwater, and, and maybe the old technology is actually the good future technology. And talking about quantum medicine, for example, this technology has been with us pretty much forever. Our ancestors used it, I feel fairly certain of that. We use it in the current moment, and I can see that it's also the future. So is that Saturn or is that Aquarius or is that Uranus? You know, so to me, it seems a lot of stuff is getting switched around now. What I might have perceived to be Saturn one day is, and maybe this is my Gemini mind, what was my truth yesterday is a different truth today. And I'm like, well, maybe Saturn was the bad guy yesterday, but maybe tomorrow he's not such a bad guy. Maybe Uranus is the bad guy, you know, but then maybe yesterday he was the good guy. So I kind of think we're being asked to let go of what we, like you said, belief system. What is the truth that I really hold to and how much do I really believe that? And is there flexibility in there for me to play with it? Do I want flexibility or do I need to be hard and fast? And I think that it's not a, a black and white rule on that either. It's like sometimes I really need to know my truth. Sometimes I need to be a little bit more like a Gemini and say, well, that was yesterday's truth. And today I've got another 20% more information that means that I'm just changing my truth slightly. And that's okay because that's my right. Yeah, and that's, that's really beautifully observed because if we are increasing in light every day, which apparently we are, it's going, you know, just in loops and bounds, then it is a whole new reality than it was yesterday because you have more light. So you have a, a different perspective on, on what's unfolding in the world. So um, yeah, I think, <clears throat> I think that's fascinating. So I do think you're absolutely right. I think the summer solstice is incredibly important. I think the waves of energy coming in are incredibly important. I think getting together in groups, either online or in person to meditate is super important because we're getting to this tipping point and it isn't, that you've got to get over a 50% level. We know that even 1% of the population can make a vast difference to the whole. That's how chaos theory and physics works. So, you know, I, I believe we're already at 15, maybe 20% of the population having, you know, very different views to what to uh, those that they held before. If we can get that even higher, then we really are reaching tipping points in what becomes our main trajectory for humanity because they're too clear you know we've talked last time about the fork in the road and they're two very clear paths right now but the summer solstice could well be that pivot that tipping point of getting more momentum onto that fast track route and if that's the case then we get to new earth much faster than we otherwise would i love that man i really do and it, what it makes me think of is you know the responsibility that i have to myself to wake myself up is equally mirrored by the responsibility to have to the other 15 20 percent who are also trying to do the same thing this is a collective effort and i kind of feel the more responsibility we can take at the individual level the 
absolute maximum effect we can help the collective it's the hundredth monkey right you know one one person can have a huge effect on the collective because we're all connected interconnected in the web of weird you know the the, the nature net um, that twangs uh, and we can feel that if we're sensitive we can feel when maybe somebody's having a thought about us somewhere else on the web you know next thing oh i'm just thinking about bob next thing bob calls on the phone Oh, that's amazing or maybe i was going to go and call paul and paul calls me in that very same moment so we know that the web is this kind of self-reciprocating twanging effect and so if that's true in these kind of more simple situations can it be true if i wake myself up make myself more available to higher frequencies is that somehow spurring the collective on i do believe so i i do too because you're at, you're changing the average if you like you're yeah. adding to what and you're you're upgrading the average and and therefore every single one of us has a responsibility but also a significant effect in what we do you know just sending out love that will change it for for other people you know yes to some extent it's butterflies wings if only one person does it but you know if, if 15 20 percent of us more do that then it's the quality because as you know david from quantum physics Mm. higher frequency light will always affect lower frequency much more powerfully than lower affecting higher it, it, it's called called downward causation it's just the way it works so it isn't so much the number of people or the percentage of people it's the it's the level of light they are holding that it's a quality not quantity issue we're talking about here i feel absolutely Absolutely. You know, talking to physics, I'd just like to give a great shout out to a wonderful man, Dan Winters, who I've learned a lot from. And I know uh, that you uh, have spent time with him, too. This guy is worth checking out. He is a, a physicist and he has developed incredible understandings of how people like us do our quantum work. And he explains it through basically the third ventricle and imploding elements or possibly even imploding DNA inside us creates the quantum field through which some of us can shamanically project or lucid dream. And for me, this, this guy is explaining magic, how magic, how we create and how we manifest through physics. So I highly recommend checking this guy out. He doesn't know me. I'm not getting paid by him or anything, but he's worth checking out because for me, he's given us a language that us magicians and shamans quite struggle with sometimes. You know, we're often a little bit out here somewhere and it's difficult to find the words, but this guy's giving the words to it. So I know that you spent time with him and also think that he's a cool guy. So just giving a shout out to that guy because he's made my life a little bit easier the last few weeks. <laughs> Wonderful. No, he's a genius. He's an absolute mystic and genius. So David, hmm. share your view about this summer solstice. And also I know you're, you know, very involved with all your plant work on, on what's happening there too. Yeah, so I mean, for me, and, and this is the piece I want to also come to in a minute is, is after solstice, but what I'm seeing now in this moment between today, which is the 8th of June, and this video is either going to go out tonight or first thing on Wednesday morning uh, tomorrow. So we wanted to do it before the new moon because of this powerful time for intentions. Then we've got this sort of peak moment with Saturn square Uranus on the 14th. And then we've got this, I think, very, very powerful, very pivotal moment on the summer solstice with this kind of very interesting dualistic element of could be good could be a bit gritty whatever but we also have a very very powerful global meeting happening in my hometown on the new moon solar eclipse now i don't want to go into that too much i think most of you can probably work out what that is but to me that's no coincidence so I don't know what is going to happen. Um, my uh, father-in-law lives in St. Ives and he's reporting to us that it's it's quite intense down there. A lot of very upset people. They've destroyed a lot of the local lanes, setting up police camps and all of that kind of stuff that they love to do around those meetings. But I don't know what's going to happen during that time. But it feels to me very, very significant that these big, important meetings always take place on a new moon or like a general election takes place on a full moon. So whatever we are doing here on this call and talking about how to use these energies, we're not the only ones doing that. So I feel that it's really important to tune in to the new moon, particularly uh, on Thursday, Thursday lunchtime, I think, in Britain. And I just wanted to share with you um, three plants that we've been working with recently, which are really great for basically birthing new ideas. I mean, it can also be used very, very much in, in the birthing of a new child through, through pregnancy. And the three plants I just want to briefly mention are mugwort, which is a great cleansing plant, also a great midwifing plant, but it's a plant that we work with because it's highly anti-parasitic. It's the same family as wormwood, which I might also bring into the conversation a bit later. Today, I've been out collecting mugwort. It's, we always collect it at this time because interestingly, summer solstice is mugwort's power day, as is it's St. John's wort. 
And the day that you talk about before uh, solstice is called St. John's Eve, which is a very, very magical day when, according to folk traditions, you can actually go out. And if you dig down into the roots of Mugwort, you might be lucky enough to find a little black coal, uh, which has a very, very magical talismanic uh, quality to it. I've never been lucky enough to find one. Um, but if any of you are out there and hunting Mugwort on that day, maybe you will. But Mugwort is a very strong cleansing plant, which can remove a lot of toxic energy, particularly parasitic energies, like all of the Artemis is very, very good for removing parasites in the gut, but also very good on the energetic level. Anything that a plant can do in the body, it will also do on the energetic level. It's how we do a lot of our healing work with these plants in the quantum space. Then want to introduce a plant called fireweed, rose bay willow herb, which we work with for trauma clearing. Uh, this is basically a blueprint plant, very, very good at removing toxic imprints, uh, i.e. like memories uh, or files, you could say. It's very good at deleting those files. So those toxic memories can't in any way attract anything back in or uh, possibly uh, resurface at some point. So this plant clears trauma, but it also, in the same way that it does when the uh, fire has burnt the mountain and cleared the forest, it's the, one of the first plants that comes back because it loves to grow abundantly quickly. So it's a plant that really inspires new growth and it has such abundant seed heads that blow on the wind that the mountain can be covered really within the space of one season. So if you work with this plant, uh, which loves doing this work in that kind of way, you can create a nice clean blueprint if you're a mother to be, for example, in the womb, but you can also use this uh, for creating new ideas. And from that blueprint space, you then call in another plant, Lady's Mantle, which is really the guardian of the womb space. Lady's Mantle, uh, as my wife Emma has been working with a lot recently and has just released an interesting new online course about which you can find on Wisdom Hub, but Lady's Mantle is a plant that works in the void. And the void is the place where we create our ideas and manifest from. So the womb is, is, is that beautiful, you know, for, for the females, that's the beautiful creation space. But us, us chaps, we can also work with the same principles. And so I just wanted to bring these three plants in as a way of showing that when we cleanse, remove the trauma and then create this beautiful holding space, which is what Ladies Mantle does, it gives us the space to manifest our dreams from this very clear, uncontaminated, unpolluted, unexposed space which is held safely with a plant like Ladies Mantle, which his latter name is Alchemilla. So there's a lot of very, very ancient alchemy from uh, ancient uh, past traditions, particularly from, actually particularly from the Arab world. Uh, this plant has a lot of interesting uh, connections. And so when we work with plants like this, it gives us the opportunity to enter into a new moon space, so clear and calm and very, very assured of what we want to call in. If we try and do these new moon prayers, a little bit fried, maybe just come off watching mainstream media or just had a powerful conversation with somebody that we didn't quite resonate with. Then we go down and we try to meditate. Our mind can be filled with these other, uh, how to say, influences. So these plants are really, really good at moving those influences out. So uh, you can find out more about these plants on our website or just you can always search for them. But I just wanted to bring them in because this is the world that we operate in and this is how we work to remove uh, possible parasitic energies, possibly heavy metals in the atmosphere. Another plant I'm working with at the moment, our native plant Herb Robert, very, very similar to coriander, excellent at moving heavy metals out through the feet. So in the evenings, we've been going out collecting it from our local wood, sitting, uh, watching something nice and uplifting and having a foot bath with Herb Robert. Beautiful, uh, you know, and when we run out of coriander for our detox movies, we put Herb Robert in. And actually we're realizing that coriander is not so great in supermarkets or even, you know, our local health food shop or whatever. So we're just putting uh, Herb Robert in. So once we kind of take a little bit of time to become more self-aware, more out in nature, we can start to find these really beautiful gifts that nature is just abundant with. You know, and then if you bring in plants like wormwood, who I, I have introduced to you, and I know that you're now starting to work with, wormwood is a plant that just removes the veil completely. It can be a little bit uncomfortable, but if you want to know the truth, wormwood is the plant. You know, it's a bit like that um, famous clip, I think, with Jack Nicholson. You want the truth, you can't handle the truth. That's wormwood. You know, wormwood <laughs> invites you into that space, but she's uncompromising. So if you want to know the truth, start working on a quantum level with wormwood. If you want to cleanse your body, of very, very strong parasitic energies that you may have been exposed to in, in recent times. Wormwood is going to do that on the energetic psychic level, but also going to do it on the physical level. So this is just some very small stories from, from the world of uh, plants and medicine that we work with in. But the reason I'm sharing that is because the new moon is so, so important. I've been tuning into this new moon for a very, very long time. And I'm you know going to sit and probably do a ceremony and do some strong prayers, but I've already been preparing my prayers 
a little bit, like I shared earlier, with these kinds of mindsets, I am now detox. My body is vibrating at a new frequency, a new cellular level that means that my sciatica is no longer there. You know, those kinds of things. I'm not suffering the effects of two knee operations like I have most. That's all gone. And I'm really inviting that new frequency in. And like you said, those new photon lights that we've had come into the earth i've certainly been experiencing the last few days and it can be can be quite strong some some of you out there may have been experiencing the same very very strong futuristic energy actually i've experienced it as sort of expansion but also quite distorting very very fast almost too fast for my brain my current brain capacity to deal with so made my head hurt a little bit particularly yesterday so some of you out there experiencing that I feel that's part of what Pam's been talking about. And to me, it's an indicator of the fact that we are absorbing more light. Um, but it's like, you know, maybe it's like getting a new, I don't know, I wouldn't say a new computer game because maybe that's a little bit old school. But when you get something new to play with, you're kind of not so good at it first. But after a few weeks of playing around with it, you're really, really good. And I think that this new technology that's coming into our body is a bit like that. At first, we're not really sure. It feels a bit clunky. You haven't quite got it you know but as time goes by i think that we'll just naturally expand into that space yeah beautiful and and also because this is such a fast physical evolution so so many people have been saying to me that you know they felt very dizzy people have been falling over even through dizziness because the the energies are getting finer in a way yes they're futuristic because i think we're going to really going to develop our galactic side in a way that we've never done in our lifetimes or, or, or many lifetimes indeed but the energies are also getting finer but it's happening at such a speed it it is having a physical impact and and people are feeling you know quite odd or strong headaches or whatever until it's anchored again but i think you know we're going to be going through some pretty fast months um you know if we want anchoring we've got to do it ourselves bare feet on the earth hugging trees that sort of thing you know we're going to have to come back to some very simple basic resources mm. to, to pull our energy down into the body yeah i think that's really true i mean interestingly because plants that are good for centering oak oak is a master of its own space if you see an oak tree out in the forest it will always have maximum amount of light it can be surrounded by pine trees but the oak is always bathed in light it creates that space you know, tobacco is also a great grounding centering part. I'm not encouraging people to go out and smoke, but as, a, as an energy, tobacco is incredibly grounding and centering. I work with tobacco shamanically a lot um, and I find that it helps, but I don't go out and smoke regularly, but I work with tobacco in that way. So, you know, those are just a few things, but, you know, we're rattling through time and we still got after solstice. So what happens on, uh, I think it's the 22nd, right? The day after we've got some serious movements there too, which I want to talk about. Yeah. Then Mercury moves direct on the 22nd, you know, right. Jupiter has moved direct on the 20th, Mercury moves direct on the 20th. And I think many of us will have greater clarity then. Right. Having just had the solar eclipse, I think many of us will have greater clarity on what's been happening in the world or where we really want to go. But it's clearer thinking from that point on. But certainly if I look down the timeline at pretty much any new or full moon, they are very, very powerful, all of them. I mean, just as an example, if we look at the, the Cancer New Moon on July 9th and 10th, um, we've got Pluto opposing the Sun and Moon. You wow. know, that's pretty powerful stuff, Neptune square to Mercury. So again, we have this duality of um, either feeling confused and overwhelmed and disinformation or connecting to, to the divine. But Pluto opposing the sun and moon is extraordinarily powerful. So it would be quite interesting because the sun and moon are in cancer then, that's often a sign that's very sensitive and protective. And so it would be very interesting to see how that plays out because it's actually a T-square because Pluto opposing sun and moon, they're all squaring Eris, the street fighter, the one who kicks off so we could be having some very lively times indeed around issues of power and our own sense of power or impotence when you see that particularly that's around the the cancer new moon on july the 10th you think ninth 10th and then if we if we romp on um to the aquarius full moon on july 23rd 24th we've got Pluto conjunct the moon, <laughs> Pluto yeah. conjunct the moon and opposing the sun. So these aspects with Pluto are 
I mean, potentially at their best, they are about spiritual transformation. They truly are about spiritual transformation. But at a 3D level, they may well be about um, issues of power in that Pluto is getting very close now to the end of Capricorn, you know, the last few degrees. And so there may be greater attempts, as I mentioned earlier, on, you know, on control. Mm. So that's going to be very interesting. My, my sense is that the higher your frequency, the more to some extent or to a large extent that you're kind of bubble wrapped in some of this. And the more you can be self-sufficient and truly create a bubble for yourself in life. So you're not exposed to 3D reality too often, then that will help enormously to ride these waves, I think. It's interesting to say that, yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting that we should be looking at a time, maybe not to be separating ourselves, because uh, I don't necessarily think that's that's the motif either. But creating that energetic bubble around our our own space as much as anything else, I think, is super important because that can allow us to navigate through the choppy waters of the world around us somewhat secure knowing that we are in our own little energetic bubble but it doesn't necessarily mean bubbling away in our house and never leaving it for six months right i don't think that's what you're talking about no no not at all no it's 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 functioning in the world but but functioning at a level where we know that our frequency is kind of such high light that it's radiating outwards and maybe pushing away anything that's unwelcome. I think frequency is the antidote. I think 5D is the antidote to other difficult and possibly negative influences on us. So, you know, that's, that's the, that's the game changer really. Mm. And then if we look down the timeline again, I like to look at new moons and full moons because it's like kind of striking a tuning fork twice a month. But, you know, we look at the new moon on the 8th of August. That, of course, is the Lion's Gate. So that's going to be a very strong day. We've got, we've got Uranus tightly square the sun and moon. <laughs> so it, it, no, that is, again, some kind of a quantum jump. Mm. It's a quantum jump. It could, again, bring in the galactics in some way. It's very powerful. And, you know, these, when these very big distant archetypes hit the sun and the moon in particular, big things happen. Big things happen for us as individuals, but also out in the world. And, you know, just looking all through, really, new moon on the 6th of September, we've got Neptune opposing the sun and moon. Sun and moon conjunct Mars. I mean, it's just, you know, every single one. And then, as I say, when you get into... Um, yeah, again, full moon, 20th of September, Sun conjunct Mars, Pluto square Mercury. But then we get into the retrogrades moving direct again, as I talked about earlier in the call, um, and that change in direction. And that's why I think October is going to be extremely interesting mm. as a change in direction for society in some way. Now, how that manifests is down to us, how we live it out. But it's certainly because they all shift within less than a two week period. And what's interesting for me coming from the elemental point of view is that that's only really a week or two after the autumn equinox, which is when we shift from water to earth, which is really grounding in uh, whatever has gone on for the rest of the year. That's when we bring the ideas into a place of grounding. So in the old days, that would have been putting the grain in the barn, making sure that we've got enough food to get through the winter. But it's also the grounding and culmination of whatever the rest of the year has been about. Uh, so I think that's really interesting that we go from that retro reflective phase into, OK, now we just need to move forward with whatever we've learned. We ground that in and we prepare for the winter and then whatever's coming next. But if I may, I just want to loop back to this Mercury going direct on Tuesday, the 22nd of June, because it feels really significant to me. I mean, uh, I've talked about this with, with John on uh, another show just recently, but uh, we really think that Mercury is, is the magician. It's the speller. The person that cast the magic mercury is very magic for us and it's like hmm, mercury going direct at 16 degrees of gemini the day after solstice which for me is the most powerful point of this year so far to me speaks of like whatever dreams prayers we put out on that new moon really get charged strongly with that peak fire energy on the solar solstice a summer solstice and then we move into this day after when boom mercury goes direct it's like okay whatever magic you've called in with your prayers and your attention is now going to get activated immediately no hanging around it's now and then we have neptune going retro at 23 degrees of pisces a few days later which is sort of a little bit of fine tuning of old stuff maybe coming up 
uh, maybe some old bits and pieces that need maybe some new solutions. So I feel that this is a very solution driven end to June. Would you agree with that, Pam, or am I yeah, reading that slightly? Uh, yeah, I think that's absolutely wonderful to see Mercury as the magician, because I tend to think of Mercury as the trickster. Mm. He's also astrology is the trickster. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at this hand, but I'm doing something else with this hand. You know, because it's in Gemini, which is a dual sign. Mm. So I much prefer your interpretation of the magician <laughs> and, you know, making real your dreams. And that is entirely possible. It's all down to us and how we frame our belief systems and how we use our energy. But be aware at the lower level of expression at the 3D, classically Mercury can be the trickster. Look what I'm doing over here with my magic trick. And actually I'm doing something over here. I was going to say there's two types of magician. There's a magician that does the sleight of hand, which is the trickster. And then there's the magician that manifests from the higher mind space who changes his world. One is real. The other one is a, is a sleight of hand. And I kind of feel that Mercury really strongly is bringing that dualistic option to us. Are you the trickster? Are you being tricked? Or are you the manifester or being manifested? Beautiful. You know, what's going on there exactly? So I, I like that energy, but I just wanted to bring it into the space because for me, it feels very powerful the day after the solstice and all of this new moon that whatever has come to our mind, this magic can then be put into action immediately. So I just, I don't know, it seems important to me. I just wanted to raise yeah, That's a beautiful, you know, and a beautiful thing to visualize for people that, yeah, now we can get the action. Now we can go do it. So, yeah, I think that, you know, I think that's a, a fabulous and very uplifting way to look at that for sure. Nice. And, and I kind of, you know, sometimes I hear uh, people talking and there's always this sort of like later on in the year when this has happened and that's happened. I'm like, but but stuff's happening right now. Why why are we pushing it down the road to some point where we kind of feel like we don't have to think about it until then? But it's just like, well, you know, we saw with Brexit what happens when you do things like that. It drags on and then it's just like really gritty and it's like you, you wish you weren't living anymore and all of that kind of stuff. But it's just like if we kind of take control in the present moment, it can happen not tomorrow even, but it can happen right now. And so I, I personally would really urge everyone listening to to take the bull by the horns, be brave, make good, solid prayers for yourself, good, solid visions and, and believe in them. You know, whatever they are, whatever is coming to you naturally, not from somebody else who's put an idea in your head, but what's what's coming to you of your own volition. And I think for me personally, this is what this whole process is about is what's my role in, in all of this? Who am I? Why am I here? Maybe how did I even get here? You know, that's a question that's coming to me a lot too at the moment, as Pam will know from our off-camera chats, but maybe that's a conversation for another time. But, you know, um, I, I feel that this is kind of, this is what this whole journey is about. 2020, 2021, you know, is the summer solstice the most pivotal moment? Question mark as we put in the title. I don't know, but maybe, maybe not. That's for you to decide, right? And I think, David, you're absolutely right. You know, every moment counts here because our world is changing so incredibly fast. Yes, the crumbling of the old, but the bringing in of the new. New Earth already exists. It's just a frequency jump that we can get to right now, the next moment. So we have to be much more aware, moment to moment, minute to minute, of our thinking, our feeling, our manifesting ability, and our mastery. What is our mastery? Why did we choose to come here at this time to help the earth and to help humanity? What is your mastery? And to become much more um, proactive and much more a creator rather than just being, you know, the rubber hitting the road, being kicked around by the nightly news. <laughs> you know, we have to step into that empowerment. I think it's incredibly important if we are going to make the best of the summer solstice and beyond. But it's every minute counts because it's happening so quickly. Mm, our host sister, I love that. You know, great. So look, you know, again, an hour has absolutely flown by, Pam. And, you know, I'm sure we could probably chat for more hours. But uh, you're a very busy lady. I'm super grateful for taking the time out to, to chat to me again and to bounce around some ideas that hopefully our audience and listeners have found inspiring and maybe a little bit useful too uh, ahead of these big moments uh, for those people who don't know Pam uh, and I'm sure there aren't many people who are watching this who don't but if they don't where can they find out more about your work I know that you're super busy and not taking bookings but you have a great book that's out and you have a, a monthly newsletter that you can sign up to which I definitely recommend I get that every month where, where can they find out more Pam yeah just pamgregory.com I've got two books you can you can buy from there um, teaching videos and yes a long monthly newsletter which is pretty epic and it's all on pamgregory.com and a bit of very busy YouTube channel too. Very busy YouTube channel. Yeah, totally. And and you're making YouTube work. So congratulations. You know that that's a fair feat in these days. I, I'm totally in awe of how you managed to keep doing that. 
uh, <laughs> learning a lot from you in that process. So bless you. But I totally recommend the newsletter. It's a lot of work goes into it. I love the review because it makes me think about the things that have happened in my life. Plus you get the forecast. So please do check out Pam's work. And for those of you who maybe have not come across me before, because this is going out on Pam's YouTube channel and our own TV platform, wisdomhub.tv. Uh, myself and my wife, Emma, do a lot of work with plant medicine, but mostly in the quantum realm. We do uh, remote healings via quantum technology, working with plant spirits that we've dieted with over many, many years. Uh, we also have a very broad range of plant essences. Uh, flower essence is very, very powerful quantum medicine. I believe the medicine of the future on the spiritual and emotional level. You can find out more about that at plantconsciousness.com. So thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you, Pam, again for your time. Um, it's been my pleasure to host today's uh, show and hopefully we'll see you all again. Good night and God bless everybody. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you, David. Thank you, Pam. To right now. Bye-bye.